is always something happening around the globe. We are here today to get you updated about events and programs from around the globe. A very good evening and warm welcome to the Television Collective News. This is Shristi Khadgi. Let's move on to today's headlines. Nepal Transportation and Warehouse Management Company Limited enters its 50th year. Baumdev finally to become a member of the National Assembly. Produce in Kodesho demanding repeal of tax. Aviation and public transport will be operational from September 21st. Nepali is being sent out as domestic workers by submitting recommendations. Kuwaiti government decided to deport eight Nepalese. Two persons arrested with 10 kg of opium. 15 more people died and 1,117 infected from coronavirus. The number of deaths due to corona worldwide rose to 9 lakhs and 32,000. Weather report across country. Caution advice for next 24 hours. Leicester and Everton start Premier League with a win each. Messi, the highest earning player in the world. Here we go for news in detail. Nepal Transport and Warehouse Management Company Limited, which has been managing the cargo of Tribun Airport, has entered its 50th year. The company has planted trees in the office premises on the occasion of the anniversary. The company said no other special events had been held this year due to pandemic. More than 25 saplings of different species were planted in the company premises. Roman Shrestha, branch manager of the company, said that the trees have been planted to balance the environment in the premises and to encourage the tree planting campaign. He said that there was a plan to donate blood on the occasion of the anniversary, but it was limited to tree planting due to corona. Similarly, Vishnu Prashad Nupani, branch officer of the company, said that the company will be integrated in the coming days to move the company forward. CPN Vice Chairman Baumdev Gautam is said to become a member of the National Assembly. The cabinet on Monday decided to recommend him to the president for nomination to the National Assembly. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma only tabled the proposal to recommend Gautam only towards the end of the meeting. The Prime Minister's office will probably send a letter to the President's office on Tuesday to nominate Gautam. President Bidya Devi Bhandari will then nominate him as a member of the National Assembly in accordance with Article 86 of the Constitution and Gautam will enter Parliament in the House of Representatives. After the term of then Finance Minister Yuvraj Khatiwada, as a member of the National Assembly expired on Fagun 21st, the CPN Secretariat meeting on Fagun 14 had decided to take Gautam to the National Assembly from the nominated quota. But Prime Minister Oli wanted to give continuity to Khatiwada. Khatiwada was reappointed as the Finance Minister for six months as per the constitutional provision even though he was not a member of Parliament. The CPN had decided to nominate Gautam as a candidate for the House of Representatives at an appropriate time. Last time, Prime Minister Oli had asked Gautam to contest from Dolpa for the House of Representatives. After taking oath, Gautam will become a member of the National Assembly for five and a half years. Traders have staged a protest in Kodesho demanding repeal of taxes for the lockdown period, saying business has collapsed due to the corona epidemic. The traders of Kodesho have protested peacefully, saying that the government has not provided any concession as the interest on loans invested in the business is increasing. They displayed placards demanding a reduction in the rent for the shutdown period, a repeal of the lockdown and a reduction in bank interest. 
According to Neil Prashad Gimiri, a member of the National Federation of Nepali Entrepreneurs, a peaceful demonstration was held to create a conducive business environment and draw attention to the problems faced during the period. They also warned that they would hold peaceful demonstration during office hours every day and would be forced to hesitate if their demands are not addressed. <laughs> उपस्थित भएका छौ र हामीले कुनै नारा जुलुस गरेको हैन मौन रूपमा प्रदर्शन जस्तो अफिस टाइम बियानाको 10 बजेको आसपास सबै चाहिँ तपाईको मिडिया कर्मी देखि राज्यका सम्पूर्ण निकायमा बस्ने मान्छेहरु सडकमा हिँड्नु हुन्छ त्यो टाइम पारेर हामीले हाम्रा व्यवसायका बाहिर हाम्रा भका भित्र उकुस मुकुस भका समस्याहरुलाई उजागर गर्न खोजेको हो पहिलो चरण हामीले सामान्य ढंगको यो यसैले सन्देश पुग्छ नेपाल सरकारलाई भन्ने हाम्रो चाहना हो यदि यो सन्देशले सरकारले सुनेन हाम्रा मागहरुलाई सम्बोधन गरेन अब 6 महिना देखि हामी 15 मा छौ घरबाडा दिनका दिन बढि नै रहेछ व्यवसायमा लगानी गरेको ऋणका ब्याजहरु बढि रहेका छन् त्यो सम्बोधन हुने सम्भावना काहीबाट छैन राज्यले कर उठाउने बेलामा व्यवसाय खोलेको जस्तो बुझिन्छ जस्तो असार मसन्त आयो कोर्टको टाइम भयो राज्यले व्यवसायहरु खोल्थ्यो अब फेरि असोज मसन्त आयो कोर्टको टाइम भयो राज्य व्यवसाय खोल्नतिर उत्तर छ बाकी समस्या राज्यले सम्बोधन नगरेको जस्तो हामीलाई भान भयो त्यही कुरालाई लिएर हामीले चाहिँ यो कार्यक्रम आयोजना गरेका हौ हाम्रो कुरा के हो भने सरकारलाई हामी जहिले पनि सपोर्ट गर्छौ सरकारले भनेको हामीले जहिले पनि मान्ने नै हो तर हाम्रो माग के हो भने आजको दिनमा समस्यामा परेका हामी साना व्यवसायीहरु जो सटर भाडामा लिएका छौ घर भाडा बढेर दिनानु दिन माथि गइराखेको छ भोलि घरबेटीले निस्केर जा भनेका दिन निस्केर हिँड्नु पर्ने अवस्था छ त्यसको सम्बोधन राज्यबाट भएको छैन हामीले बैंकबाट सहकारीबाट पैसा ब्याजमा लिएर काम गरेका हुन्छौ त्यो ब्याज सरकारले कुनै एउटा माध्यम बनाएर त्यो ब्याज छुटिनु पर्यो घरबाट छुटमा पहल गर्नु पर्यो त्यो बेला वैज्ञानिक घरबाट निर्धारण गर्ने समय पनि हो सरकारलाई यही बेला चाहिँ नि कहाँको भाडा कसरी निर्धारण गर्न सकिन्छ भनेर सरकारले निर्धारण गर्न पनि सक्छ वैज्ञानिक ढंगले काम गर्ने हो भने हाम्रो माग त्यो पनि हो घर भाडा एक एकरूपता आओस् ठाउँ हेरेर घर भाडा होस् व्यवसायीका जति पनि बोझ छन् यी ऋण छन् यी ऋणका ब्याजहरू मिना गरियोस् र व्यवसायीलाई अब फेरि उठ्नका लागि बिना धितोका केही लोनहरू सरकारले अनुदानमा थप्ने या त सहुलियत रेटमा थप्ने Government has decided to operate long distance transport and air travel from September 21st. Cabinet meeting held on Monday decided to resume air flights and public transport. Both the services are being operated by adopting public health standards. Vehicles will be able to carry only 50% of the seat capacity. Public transport and aviation were closed after the lockdown on April 25th. The government did not allow the operation, saying there was a risk despite the businessmen demanding reopening. Committee on Industry and Commerce and Labor and Consumer Affairs under the House of Representatives has stated that manpower companies and embassies of the concerned countries are still working to send Nepalese out as domestic workers. At the committee meeting held at Singhadawar on Monday, committee chairman Bimal Srivastav said that even though it was not possible to send domestic workers, Nepalese were sent out as domestic workers by submitting recommendations to work in other companies. Chairman Srivastav said that Nepalese would be sent from Nepal after being recommended for other jobs but after reaching their respective countries, they would be employed as domestic workers. Chairman Srivastav said that the condition of domestic workers was deplorable. During the committee's visit to different countries and added that foreign countries should study and investigate the issue of sending workers. Srivastav said there should be a proper agreement between the country demanding labor and Nepal so that Nepalese living abroad should get all the facilities. At the meeting, Human Rights Commission member Sudip Patak said that all local levels should keep records of those going and returning for foreign employment. Member Patak said that if there was a record of domestic workers, they would be able to carry out rescue and other work at tricks. Similarly, Joint Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Harish Chandra Gimiri, said that Nepalese have been repatriated through online registration since April and the process is still going on. In the meeting, parliamentarians expressed their view that the practice of sending women workers abroad as domestic workers should be stopped. 
Similarly, other parliamentarians also said that governments should not encourage sending of domestic workers to the Gulf countries. Kuwaiti government has decided to deport eight Nepalese on charges of dealing an illegal domestic liquor. Last week alone, 12 Nepalese were arrested in Kuwait for illegal production and sale of alcohol. Kuwait's local lower court has decided to deport eight Nepalese. Eight Nepalese were arrested from Kuwait's Mahabulla area. Meanwhile, Kuwaiti police arrested four people, including two women from a place called Jabriya, which runs a liquor production center. They had been producing and selling illegal homemade liquor. The sale and distribution of alcohol in Kuwait is illegal. However, Nepalese who want to earn a lot of money in a short period of time have been found to be dealing in illegal homemade liquor. Nepali embassy in Kuwait said it was seeking information from Kuwait's immigration department. Baki police have arrested two persons with 10 kg of opium. The district police office Baki informed that two persons were arrested while they were being brought from Dang district to Baki district on Monday. Police said that 10 kg of opium was recovered from their bag. Police said that they were arrested from Kushum, Rapti, Sunarigao Municipality, one of Banke district. According to the police, they were smuggling opium into Kushum Bazar on the basis of special information. Than Bahadur Sen, 53, of Rukumputha, Uttarganga, Gaupalika, 8, and Basanta Gharti Magar, 24, of Dang Dorahi, Submetropolis, 19, were found walking on the road at Kushum in Rapti Sunari, Gaupalika, 1. Banke informed Police Chief Om Bahadur Rana. According to Subsection 3 of Section 14, 6 of the Narcotic Drugs Control Act 2033 BS, they can be imprisoned for 15 years and can be fined up to Rs 25 lakh. Corona has been confirmed in 1,170 more people in Nepal. During the test conducted in different parts of the country, 399 women and 771 men and 1,170 more corona were confirmed. Similarly, corona has been seen in 512 people in the Kathmandu Valley. According to the Ministry of Health, 440 corona were found in Kathmandu, 29 in Lalitpur and 43 in Bhaktapur. At the same time, the number of corona infection in Nepal has reached 55,329. Another 15 people have died due to corona. The death toll from the corona has risen to 360. Currently, the number of active infected people is 15,393. A total of 879 people have been discharged on Monday, while 39,576 people have been discharged so far, said Health Ministry spokesperson Dr. Jageshwar Gautam. Currently, there are 6,892 people in quarantine. Similarly, there are 7,275 people in home isolation and 8,118 people in institutional isolation, according to the Health Ministry. A total of 932,744 people have died so far from the coronavirus, which has spread like an epidemic worldwide. So far, 29,444,688 people have been infected with the coronavirus in the world, while 21,279,833 people have conquered the corona. At present, 60,798 of those infected worldwide are in critical condition, according to the World Health Organization. According to meteorologists, light to heavy rain have been falling in different parts of the country since last night. According to meteorologists at the Weather Forecast Division, there is a possibility of light to moderate rain with thunder, lightning in some parts of the country and the afternoon as well. There is a possibility of heavy rain in one or two places of Province 1, Province 2, Bagmati Province and Gandaki Province. Similarly, light to moderate rain with thunderstorm is expected in some parts of the country at night. There is a possibility of heavy rain in one or two places of Province 1, Province 2, Bagmati Province and Gandaki Province. There is a possibility of heavy rain in one or two places of Province 1, Province 2, Bagmati Province and Gandaki Province. Warning has been issued for the next 24 hours as heavy rains are likely to place in Province 1, Province 2, Bagmati Province and Gandaki Province, so more caution is advised. Leicester and Everton have made a winning start to Premier League football. Leicester beat newcomers West Bromwich Albion 3-0 in the first game of the league on Sunday night. In the next game, Everton stunned Tottenham 1-0 at home. Leicester's Jamie Vardy scored twice and Timothy Castegne scored once to beat West Bromwich Albion at home. Leicester opened the scoring in the 56th minute after a goalless draw in the first half. Castani headed in a Danish Pratt pass. Vardy then scored two consecutive goals from the penalty spot to give Leicester an easy victory. 
while they made good use of the penalty after opposition player Kylie Bartley fought Harvey Burners inside the box. Leicester got the second penalty in the 84th minute. Badons was fouled by West Bromwich's Dada Oz and Badi scored from the penalty spot. West Bromwich, who performed average in the first half, proved helpless in the second half. Leicester is in second place with three points after the first victory. West Bromwich have started the game with a loss. In the next game, Dominic calvert levin of Everton scored a goal to disappoint Tottenham at home. In the competitive game, the only goal scored by Everton in the second half was decisive. Dominic scored a header in the 55th minute to a free kick by Lucas Dine. Tottenham's attempt to return the goal in the middle was not successful till the end. Everton is in the fifth place after the first win. Tottenham began the season with a loss. Barcelona forward Lionel Messi is the highest earning player in the world. According to Forbes, in 2020, Messi is the highest earning player in the world. According to Forbes, Messi has an annual income of 126 million US dollars. Messi earns 9 million more than Juventus forward Cristiano Ronaldo. Messi has earned 92 million from salary and 34 million from endorsement. Ronaldo also earns 70 million from salaries and 47 million from endorsements for a total of 117 million. Neymar, who plays for a French club, Paris Saint Germain, has an annual income of 96 million and Mbappe has 42 million. This is all for now. We'll be back with more news and updates. Till then, keep watching Dharma Television. May all the sentient beings be at peace. Stay safe.